So yeah. it is uh, reorganization, so I will call the meeting to order. Excellent. Should we, uh, should we be, I don't know if Maisie's coming or not, but. Hey, we want to wait a few minutes. Well, no, I was going to say just that maybe we start, to, you know, with a couple more mundane things and so on and see if she shows up. All right. I, I don't know. I, maybe that's not important. It just seems that it. You know, Ben's not here either, so we'll, we'll wait. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to point her to everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I can run the meeting and start off, and no one else cares. And then, um, and then go from there. So we will put reorganization on hold. And we look to review and approve the minutes of May 21st. And also, did, did you guys get a copy of March 28th? I, March 28th, the normal minutes? These are the minutes you weren't here for. So I but they were, uh, we approved meeting minutes at the last meeting. Okay. But I no, no I don't know if we've approved that's that one. Flows. That's impossible because okay. these were written up. Donna sent me some stuff. Right, you edited, edited it. sent it back to her. And then I, well, signed, I, I signed off on it. Okay, I didn't subsequently receive Okay. Those, so all right, so we'll have to vote them at the next meeting. Then, okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, Ms. Shaw has shown up, so we will move back to okay. number one, which is reorganization. So um, first I'm looking for nominations for chair of the committee for next year. Someone has to do it. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, what do you want to do? You happy? I'm, I'm happy to take it for a while. If anyone else is interested. So that's, that's Looking for nominations. I nominate Greg Gottschalk as uh, chair for school day. Second. A second. Any other nominations? We find that little. Power struggle amongst the school <laughs> committee. That you Good for the viewers at home. But nothing. All right. So seeing no other closing nominations. All those in favor of Greg being chair. Aye. 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 I hand it off to you. Outstanding. All, All right. right. So you have that full Vice list chair. of yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do I hear any interest uh, in vice chair or nominations? Last year was Doug. Last year was Doug. <laughs> Jessica? I'm willing to serve if nobody else steps up. I nominate Jessica. I'll second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I assume you're voting for yourself, but you're not voting. <laughs> you're not voting, okay. <laughs> Nomination for secretary? Last year was amazing. Indeed. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'd nominate Maisie for secretary. <laughs> Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Wow. All right. Let's see. What you have here. You got the diary stuff. No, frontier rep. Right. Frontier rep. Right. I'm going to keep Keith McFarland. Happy to continue. Sounds good. Or Sorry. actually, you appoint these, I believe. You, we you don't do. vote on You appoint yeah. everybody else, so you just ask. Outstanding. Me. All right. You have it here by appointment. Outstanding. All right. Uh, union representatives? Peter, Maisie? I try to go to the meetings, so. I try to go to the meetings. Um, <laughs> or Jessica? I'm happy to fix it up with you. Just a matter of really making sure we can get to meetings often, yeah. but particularly if it's often, like I don't know if we're going to have anything this summer, we got to vote on anything. So we there's none expected this summer oh, because okay. right because of contract. There will be less of well, we'll find out we'll where find we go out. with those. But the things they will vote on will be the things coming up will be the contract. If there's any change in upper administration, which everything kind of been resettled and the reshuffling of right. chairs, so that should be hopefully static for a while. Right. Um, those are the main things I'm trying to think of, and you know, um, and then we do joint meetings for informational, but I don't see any votes. Anybody here. So just, there's not a lot of action this year coming up in it, but gotta have it ready in case there is. Right. <clears throat> so let's see. So what's your pleasure, Greg? 
Well, it's my pleasure. Um, tell you what. Yeah. How about, uh, you know, Peter and, uh, and Jessica? All right. Okay. School council liaison. Maisie, are you still happy in that role? Or? Yeah. You can? Collaborative liaison. I'll volunteer for that one. Outstanding. Keith McFarland for that one. And negotiations team. Still needs to exist. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You might be able to put myself on that one. Outstanding. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think that's everything. Yeah. So we have the May 21st minutes to review and approve. Move to approve them. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, outstanding. All right. And with the uh, financial warrants. Sure. Something. Uh, the warrants are going around, and we have 10 of them uh, for a total of $73,139.37. I did print out the results for you only because I do apologize for them being so late last night, but um, things are shifting more rapidly, so I spent uh, a good chunk of the day just making sure that things were where they needed to be, so just Is that all you mailed out yesterday? Yes. Okay. But um, I just wanted to, because it was late in the day, I didn't want to not have them available to you in the way that you could take a peek at them. Um, so I ran expenditures. I ran the expenditures through last Friday, so it encompasses six weeks basically because we are so close to the end and things are so tight um, right now. I just wanted you to have a sense of where we were as of um, this past Friday um, because I knew they were working on warrants um, for this meeting, so I didn't go into this week. Um, so. Uh, the last sheet in this um, shows where we currently stand. As you can see, there are a fair number of lines that now have zero balances because I had to um, use them to cover expenses and other lines. Uh, so that has happened. Um, you know, uh, there are still a few things out there that I know need to be um, taken care of. So that, again, this would be as of last Friday looking at a positive balance of about $9,600, um, which isn't huge, but at least it's in the black, and that's um, what we can hope for. I have started the process of moving um, the uh, food service director's salary into uh, school choice revolving. I had to set that up within our accounting system because we did not have it set up within the accounting software, and I can't do a one-sided transaction. So, um, so I've done the expenses thus far. Uh, once we get the rest of that encumbered, I'll move the rest over and then we'll make sure that the town um, knows to move it on, on the town side as well. So that's out there. Um, I met with Darius, Bob Lesko, um, and Ben, um, and Shelly Toretta um, just to talk about some things that need to happen in what is going to become the art room, which is now the out of school time room. So there's a need for a sink in there for all the obvious reasons, lots of paint and fun stuff like that. Um, Need for storage, obviously, for all of the supplies in there. Uh, need for a uh, digital projector, you know, that kind of thing. So we have some rough estimates on that. And then, you know, school time program is going to move into the cafeteria. So the buzzer system that's currently in the current room, the wiring needs to be moved, and then the equipment will just be hooked up to it. So it's not like you have to buy new equipment. It's just to drop, drop new lines um, through, this, through the ceiling. Um, to get that system to work in the cafeteria. Um, so, um, so I have some rough estimates. So probably with what's remaining, and I'm guessing based on what's still out there, we'll probably land at around 14000 to the good. We can take care of a fair amount of that in this fiscal year. So again, you're not starting fiscal 20 
at a disadvantage because of a retrofit to a classroom that was an unknown at the time that the budget was built. So. So I'm not sure her directly you can do all of that stuff or most of that stuff? Most of it. So I can get most of it off the plate, I think, um, so that there would be very little that you would have to take out of fiscal 20. The stuff you have encumbered, you have encumbered under building repairs, a little over $6,000. Right. Is that for this sort of stuff or is that other stuff? Um, some of that is stuff that's already encumbered for things that are still in the pipeline and invoices have not yet been paid. Um, some of that is for... Um, building supplies that have not yet been, um, that, you know, there's not been much of anything done with those. Um, and then, um, you know, what's left over in that line certainly we'll use to do that. So that's why I didn't designate anything as being left over in that in that line because I knew we would be harvesting that money okay. uh, as well. So um, so that's kind of where, where we're at at this point. I know there are some stipends. Um, that we're waiting to come in and a couple of other um, last minute bills. And then once we get all of that encumbered, then we'll know what we really have um, to be able to start that retrofit of that classroom. So. And then you would just encumber the money and it would be done over the summer. Right. right. Like normal procedure. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, a couple questions about sure. the finances. Um, we, we talked a little bit uh, previously about uh, this year's school choice revenue numbers and right. you were going to pursue uh, that possibly in Boston to make sure, I mean my concern is that uh, we discussed last time that there may be school choice, additional school choice students here that would, mm -hmm. would, would uh, uh, generate revenue for us, but mm -hmm. that uh, you know, a number it might be very small amounts, but it's still mm -hmm. revenue. Right. And the question is, um, to you know, just as when an expense comes in, you you want to check to make sure you're not paying too much. When you have revenue involved, you want to make sure you're getting right. all of what you're supposed to be getting. Right. And it struck me that this may not be so simple because every time you're saying, well, you know, we got an extra school choice here, or I think you said a couple of cases it was going back to the first of the year, mm -hmm. first of the school year, well, that means if we are, you know, able to get the revenue for that, that's coming out of some other town's pocket. Mm -hmm. And they may not be happy about it, and so it may be, may take some doing to, to make it happen, but it's worth it, obviously, because, you know, the money adds up. Right, and uh, I did speak to Rob O'Donnell, right. um, and he did say that once the end of the year students data are pulled into the state, that's when they look at the FTEs, and there's a drill done over the summer. Right, so, so that will be, I just want to make sure that not only for the, you know, for the prorated amount of each 5,000 for each kid, and even if they're only here for a month, that's, right. you know, that's another 500 yeah, they bucks. Have FTEs, and, yep. and they add up. Okay, but also, and you know, there may be some of them that have sped, sped increments too. Correct. And again, those can be, you know, big numbers too. Right. So, right. Um, I just, you know, if that's going to be done over the summer and we're changing, you know, the business manager thing. And so, I mean, my sense is that before I would consider that process to be done, somebody from our school ought to be double checking all those numbers to make sure we got what we deserved. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's yeah. worth doing. And I, you know, I, you know, as other circumstances, I'd volunteer to do it myself, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm leery to sort of, well, you know, you have your procedures and your ways of doing things. I just want to be, sh I just want to be sure that that gets done because we should be making sure we, when we have revenue items, that we are collecting as much as we can possibly collect because that gives us the resources to run this school. Right. And basically what happens is when they run um, the end of the year SIMS data, um, if there's a true up that has to happen at the state level, so Sunderland claims a kid and Amherst right. claims the same kid. Right. Who really owns them? When were they in a seat right. in Sunderland versus being, versus being in a seat in Amherst? And then that's how the FTEs shake out. And it's basically done by all of the student data from the student information system. That's right. how they but, do it. But I would hope that we are willing, if, if that number one, we get details enough mm -hmm. that we can determine with each particular student what the state decided mm -hmm. the situation was, and that if that decision doesn't 
mesh with our understanding of the situation that we don't hesitate to pursue it and mm -hmm. to file an appeal or something, whatever the process right. is. Yeah. Okay, Rossford, that we just don't say, ah, you know, mm -hmm. the state said this and so we just live with it if we think that the state is wrong. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And there's, there's a way to, to be able to, to check into that kind okay. of thing. So Rob's very good to work with, he really is. Okay. In, just for clarification, for what we're talking about here is in, our, in this particular case of the numbers is if you had somebody living in district and moved out of district during the school year but didn't notify the school until several months later. This is, those are the numbers, the ones where we saw the change of people that were in district and moved out. You know, there's, you know, there's nothing forces them besides, you know, good citizenship right. to let us know they moved right. or the child moves between custody or they have a lot of moving parts. So sometimes when, you know, if you're only well, just mentioning because we're like, well, how do you not know if the kid's in your district or not? That's how we not know because right. we do have you know you have people that have either changed residence, you know you know that you know change who you know right. home situations, custodial rights, you know those kind of things, and so there is some chase. There's always some chase going on in each district. So and, and, some, said, so in this particular case, this is what that's what we found when we went through the books. Right. And sometimes <laughs> there's a worry if with with parents if they move their family out of town that they wouldn't be able to continue right school here at, at some point. But so they don't ask because they, they don't, don't ask, know because they, they want to just keep status quo for their kids, which I appreciate. But right. Right. you need to understand that we allow if you start the school year, you can finish the school year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's not, when you do move out for the rest of the year, you are now a school choice. That's right. Rather than right. And so, but people don't, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I noticed here on the late, latest uh, enrollment as of four June, the number is now up to fifty two. Yep. Okay. Now again, they may be very small. Mm -hmm. You know, in very small, whatever it is, FTEs or whatever yeah. the mm -hmm. proper term is, and right. so on, but they add up. Absolutely. And any spending increments, you know, right. also, <laughs> maybe, who knows. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then I guess I also want to know in our budget that we, you know, went through this winter, spring, and so on, uh, we had a projected ending balance or a goal or whatever, but the number was $7,600 mm -hmm. that we were gonna end the year with in school choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do we stand on that? Um, we are pretty much within range of that. Again, I'm waiting for some final dust to settle. I will know probably by the beginning of next week where exactly that, that has fallen. So. Um, and is that is that making any assumption about possible extra revenue from these possible additional school choice? Um, I will have to look at the revenue drops and see if there has been. A, you probably, I'm guessing you won't see it right now. It usually happens right at the very end of things as people send in numbers at the end of the year. So uh, the true up may happen over the summer months. Right, but eventually. It will, it will catch up. I, I mean, I'm not really concerned whether, you know, if we were, if we were yeah. owed additional money, I don't care whether it comes in June, July, or August. Right. I just care that it comes at some point because you know, what we're right. looking for is where we're going to stand on school, school choice right. next year. And, you know, that's something certainly that Shelley can monitor in terms of what does the, what are the revenue payments that are coming in over the summer months, um, okay. and what does that look like. And so. then and then the final part of this for me is that in our budget, we projected a year-end balance in school choice here in FY20, mm -hmm. like a year from now, mm -hmm. right. of approximately $50,000, mm -hmm. and from uh, my point of view, and I think from the committee's point of view, and I think also from your point of view, mm -hmm. Judy, um, that was, the term you used was a cushion, and it was a cushion against a uh, possible uh, drop in school choice revenues, because you never know how many, are, you know, things change, and people that you think were going to be coming here and having a whole year of income for that school mm -hmm. choice, exactly. you know, and they change the plans, okay, and so, which to me is great, mm -hmm. okay, and to me that is uh, proper planning and proper budgeting and doing that, okay, and being open about doing it and mm -hmm. so on, you know, we basically uh, got the support of selectmen and finance to go down this road. Now, my concern, I just, you know, be open about this, is that we stick to our uh, plan, mm -hmm. okay, that it is not looking at a school choice where we're going to end the year with 50000 in it, but whoops, something came up and we need to spend some money on this and something else came up and so on, and then you turn around and buy suddenly 
you know, maybe our revenue comes in exactly the same, but somehow we spent a good chunk of that 50000 That wasn't the plan. And that wasn't what we said. And, and for a school of this size, my recommendation to you would be over time, because it's not going to happen overnight because of all of be even more what we that. discovered. Right. But over time, I would say that you should be upwards around 100000 just to right. have that sort of cushion. And I, we all know the frailties right. of this building. I was principal of this school between right. the flood and the roof. So, <laughs> you know, um, I, to be able to have a place to go other than having to go back to the town right. for something that might need some repair, um, you know. Uh, but we can't, we can't. Right. We can't. Yeah, you we can't, can't spend it too easily. Right. We have to really, you know, we really have to question whether, you know, and even, you know, I'll raise the one issue because I think in uh, one item of spending, I think in this year's budget, we basically have funded our tutors out of school choice. And it was just sort of, that's where whatever time we need another tutor, we just pay for it out of school choice. And I see that in our budget, having, you know, gone back over it some, that we had, a, a, you know, included in the numbers that resulted in the 50,000 year end balance was a $10,000 item for tutors. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, we used an 18 already this year and there's no reason to expect that it would only be 10 next year. So that's already, okay, one issue that um, will probably be hurting our year end number. Okay, I, I, I don't know if there, you know, I didn't immediately come up with any others, but I just don't want it to seem, oh, we got some money in school choice, let's just use that. And so on, because I think that's just, right. that's going to you know, shoot ourselves in the foot. Well, and I think, too, you know, what the town has done for you is to try and keep you from falling off the cliff, right. as it were. And so I think, you know, it's obviously, for a few years, it's going to be it's gonna pretty tight it's gonna spending. Take it's going right. to take, it's going to take you a good, probably three years or more but, to get but, yourself in a place where but I still, you're you know. All that being said, I still look at what you all have done in the past few months, given, you know, basically the, 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 the really bad financial situation we found ourselves in for a variety of reasons, and what you all have done to basically keep things going as well as we've managed, I think it's been, you know, it needs to be acknowledged because it hasn't been easy and I know and and you've, had to, no you've had to, <laughs> you've had to, to make a lot of tough, uh -oh. you, made, you needed to make a, a lot of tough decisions, but we're basically, you know, we're ending the year in a, in a, not a great place, but it's a whole lot better than it was looking yeah, absolutely. three months ago. Uh, for sure. Right? So, I had one very long weekend when I came but, across what had happened. But uh, I, I just want to sort of, you know, hope we have the backbone and the resolve to stick to our plan yeah. because it also is, to me, it's really important for credibility in the town, for getting the support that we got. I mean, we got, second year in a row, we got an override pass, yeah, and I think it's because, nothing short of more okay, because we have done a good job and, and you all are, you know, right out front on this for, you know, credibility, transparency, being honest about what we're doing, mm -hmm. being on, you know, and so on. And, it's just important we keep doing that. And then when we do have a budget that we try, do everything we can to, to, to this is what we live with. Now, understand that, you know, the problem is you're running the school and you gotta take care of whoever walks through the door. So I'm sure there are gonna be, you know, moments that we're gonna have to deal with this. And I don't know how it's gonna go, but it's just, this is our plan. Well, I've only been accustomed to hearing the word no, so hopefully. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was that person, when we built the library in town, and we had a fixed amount of money, and the school was building two other buildings at the same time, and there was no way we were going back to money, and I was the numbers person, and I would sit in the weekly meetings for the year we were building that building, and every meeting there would be at least a couple of times I'd say, no, we can't, you know, we've got to come up with a better solution, this is too expensive. And it's no fun, you know, but no, that's what you got to do. And, and, and this, this particular school but, is a soft place in my heart, so this, when I came I, I, across this, it broke my heart. To I, have I think the work you guys have done on, on getting us to where we're, we are right now after what was presented this year in terms of financial challenges has been extraordinary. So, thank you. Well, I'm glad you'd be helpful. <laughs> Any other discussion? Anyone else? Um,
Sorry again. One real quick one. You come up with a trash contract? You send us an email about that. Don't have trash contract yet. No. Okay. So it's coming. Okay, that's fine. I just, I, I did have one question, Judy. Um, it was towards the end, uh, there was just a number in the negative, and you had made a reference to waiting on stipends to come in. Mm -hmm. And is, is that what it would be? I was like 15,000. Page seven, salary stipends, other instructional services. Okay. That's actually school choice. Right. So the reason why was that there was no money ever budgeted for school choice. So that's that zero zero three is your school choice fund. So okay. that one page is just whatever. So that's why it shows up as a deficit because there was never a budgeted number put there. Okay. But we have, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's part of the reason why we did move some salary stuff into the local budget for FY20, right. knowing that we had to take the pressure off the school choice. Right. So hopefully over time, you know, we can kind of incrementally get some new salaries back into the local budget, or at least pieces of them. I think that will help having that kind of recurring pressure mm -hmm. on school choice, which is pretty volatile in terms of revenue. Um, you know, so you try to use it for other things that are not quite so uh, sensitive to that volatility. So. Um, I just want to say briefly also, just looking at long-term costs, uh, I've done some work looking at what we could be seeing in the far future based on some retirement mm -hmm. stuff, and I've been approached by some teachers who have been concerned that some of that data could be seen as alarmist. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that's that's out there, people should understand, is just uh, could be modeled. <coughs> so that's yeah. just an apology. If anyone saw it, thought it was fine. Well, in financial forecasting, oh, so particularly in a municipality, it is really tough to do. I mean, you get past a couple of years, and it's yeah, it could look like this or it could look like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as the further out you get, the less reliable it is. So yeah, it's hard. Uh, public comment. We have no public. And let's see. Non salary, uh, non union salary recommendations. That is a. Well, now we got to go That's an executive meeting. session, so I don't know if it, it's your pleasure to go through all the reports and then put that at the end. Let's do that. So okay. there's a principal report. Or okay. we got, What's the, you got new business? Um, the chair's meeting. Um, that was my item. So um, basically, I wanted to kind of get just a general acknowledgement. It's not a voted permission, but a general acknowledgement from the school committees that I would like to start having meetings with the chairs when necessary to help set agendas of the multiple districts or schools within our district. Um, because there's at times when, you're, when there's an order, it puts the schools at the end of the order either a disadvantage or um, lack of communication through all the schools to kind of come with a, with a similar outcome. Um, I have several examples. One, I'll just kind of, my evaluation is a good one in the sense by the time it got to Sunderland last time, you guys were on the last night of a, your meeting number four um, of five, I've already got an input from three different committees, applied that input to it, and I was at that point going, well, you know, I've already kind of, you know, it's kind of like, I'll take your input, but it's kind of, by the time it gets through the, I use the term with Conway earlier, it's, you know, you started off with some sort of meal and then you ended up with some sort of casserole. You know what I mean? Because you kind of added so much stuff that doesn't have, really has an identification to it. So on um, those particular things, I, you know, want to be able to meet with the chairs um, to go through, set the agenda for the month. But I didn't want to just start having meeting with the chairs without saying it to all the committees first. That's something I want to try next year to see if that improves. Also, we have a lot of joint meetings. And when we have joint meetings, you know, I'm setting the agenda alone because there's no chair. Well, there is a chair, but it's not as, it's not as tight. Um, and sometimes I make decisions based on, um, let me grab it. Um, you know, based on like length of meeting and not on what the committee wants. You know what I mean? Like, I, like you know, an example of that is when the business um, director's um, position was voted on. I left, that was the only thing I put on the agenda. There could have been some other things put on the agenda, but I was like, you know what, this is an emergency meeting. We're not gonna have other things agenda, get people in and out. Would have been nice to have input. So I just kind of wanted to kind of say that as a to everyone, and then 
have those meetings and see how that works. You know. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Sure, you've already set that up. No. Okay. No, it'll be for next fall. It'll be something I'll start doing for the next season. But I'm wondering if Greg should have known that before you went to this school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got. That. You can now, or you can send someone in your seat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> vice chair. Uh, exactly. But. Um, that does sound like it's up for a vote. It's not a voted item on the thing. It was more of an FYI. You know, there has been past times where there were groups created, appointed by the superintendent, which I didn't really think should be the proper way to go. And this kind of thing is what you know, other districts have meetings with the chairs to help set the agenda. Because it, it, basically, the agenda is set by the chair with working with the superintendent. We kind of do it a little bit backwards in the sense of because I have someone doing all the paperwork, and so it's kind of I set the agenda so that they get approval by the chair. But when you have multiple agendas, you know, it's, um, you know, and especially if you're trying to go a common direction, some of that conversation may need to take place prior. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just good communication. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're. I mean, part of you coming on board was like, we got to look at ways we do things and right. figure out ways to make it less drive you nuts and especially when I'm looking for general direction right. and then instead of you know I don't know and I'll give an example in executive session is why we're in executive session because of that later on okay. so and that would have been and a meeting of the chairs would have helped us where we're at now <clears throat> reports capital uh, I got a couple things uh, first of all well, just very brief, I, after we discussed last time I, uh, about whether it would be better for me to actually be on the capital planning committee, and we thought it would be, and I went and uh, um, you know, talked to people at the town hall, and they just did appointments last night, and I got myself on the committee, so I think that's useful. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Condolences <laughs> and congratulations, I'm not sure which is the usual uh, situation. The other thing that is actually... Um, going on also and that we the town just got the report uh, yesterday was the study of the ADA um, situation in town and I don't know if you've been through this with any of the other three towns or not but Sunderland had gotten a grant last year to hire FERCOG or whatever it's called the county uh, organization to come and do a study of the town's uh, and not only the town's buildings, the town's sidewalks, and also the town's procedures, uh, the way it communicates with people, you know, the variety of things that uh, uh, come under the general uh, guise of, you know, making sure that uh, our whole operations are accessible to people with a variety of um, uh, disability issues. and. Uh, that report was delivered to the town yesterday. Um, I got a copy here, hard copy. I'm glad to give to whichever one of you guys who would most like to most likes to see something in paper. I'm sure we can get some more. Um, I will also send out to everybody. Uh, this whole thing is a PDF. But if one of you, I'll just shoot this over. Don't take it. Okay. Because sometimes it's nice to see things on paper, or it's easier. Yep. Um, so. Uh, just, you know, what's the next, I mean, so they come up with, if you fold that out, that section there in the middle, okay, that's a list of stuff that they identified that uh, needs attention. It doesn't need all attention all right away. I mean, every, every, people are realistic about this, okay? And I know that uh, one place that I'd heard talk about this was, uh, in a get-together talking about the the new playground for the preschool that um, there was a significant expense for the kind of uh, surface you needed on it so it would be accessible for, for people in wheelchairs or whatever and that we would be able to apply for a grant for that once we got this done. Well, now we've got this done and so um, last night, this was at last night's selecting meeting and uh, Sherry is, you know, one of the first things she's going to check is what's the, what's the calendar look like for the cycle of, of state grants on this because we can apply for up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars of grants now again this is for the whole town and there are a number of buildings in town and so on so that um 
you know, I would expect that the process of applying for that grant is also going to mean starting to figure out, okay, what our priorities are in the town, and that's why I think this is the kind of thing that would be both, you know, between the selectmen and also the capital planning committee to figure this out, and so we'll have a seat at the table at least. Um, and so, you know, and, and part of the discussion, because this person who did this the study was there and saying that, you know, there are a whole lot of things on the list. Now, some of them are real small and can be fixed real simple, and, you know, others are not so much that way, and a few have got pretty big dollar signs attached to them. And so, you know, the question is, okay, how do we make progress? Same thing. At the same time, we've got general building needs that are also going to be looking for capital, and how do we sort of mesh all these things? So this is an ongoing thing. Um, I just want you to be aware of the fact that uh, because there will be funds available, you know, we, I, I'm not sure what process we ought to have here within the, 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 the school operation for looking at what's the school and thinking about what priorities are and uh, coming, being able to come forward with some, you know, rele relevant information to help the town decide, you know, what to, what to put into the grant request, what to spend when we get grant money, because it seems, you know, pretty much a slam dunk, you'll get a chunk of money. I don't know if you get the full amount, but you should get a chunk. And there, they talked about other sources for funds from uh, community block grants, for one, and I think another one or two things were mentioned, and so on. But I think that uh, the administration, uh, probably in this case, needs to take a good look at that and, you know, start laying out some sort of priorities and some stuff, you know, and timeline and, you know, they didn't try, she said she put costs on it, really all she did was put $1 signs, $2 signs, or $3 signs because right. there were so many things on there that going out and getting bids for everything just was more than they could handle. Um, so this is something that is, you know, pretty significant in the sense of, you know, a lot of things that need to be done at the school and what we're going to you know, highlight is stuff that we want at the top of the list. Did you peruse that list and, and if you did, is there any major things that could come up with the school? Well, the major things I think that were that had dollar signs for the school were stuff dealing with bathrooms, okay, be good combination of both fixtures and uh, space around fixtures and so on that um, basically the, the school was rated uh, mostly accessible, but not totally, meaning that uh, entrance was no problem, but bathrooms were, you know, they were there and they were usable, but it wasn't what you really want. And so there were a number of ones there that would take some funds, and there were significant dollar signs uh, attached to actually uh, both the preschool playground, just as it stands now, I'm not talking about the plans for the new one, but just the fact that now you know, both the whole area and a number of the features in the area were not properly accessible because of the ground surface. Mm -hmm. And then they also said that that was essentially, it sounded to me, without knowing, that essentially the existing playground out on the north side of the building had similar issues because of the ground surface. And so the accessibility was not what it should be. Now, again, I, I'm just, you know, I took a... We weren't going, you know, they, it was like a 30 minute spent on this at the Fleckman's meeting, and so it wasn't going into details into all the big dollar items. Uh, and, and, and the person from the, the person who did the report said, you know, you're not expected to get this stuff done, in, you know, in a year or two. But, you know, number one, getting the report done is excellent, okay, because that actually, um, you know, shows that the town is making an effort. Okay, uh, before I forget, one of the things that came up was, you know, one of the things that you are judged on for your accessibility is, is your information accessible, okay? And, you know, in particular these days, are, is your website accessible? And you don't think about it, but being an accessible website means, for example, someone who's colorblind, okay, you know, still can use it just as well as anybody else, someone who has, you know, hearing problems or whatever the, whatever the disability might be, Okay, can they still get the same information out of your website? And I asked about that, and they said they had checked the town one, and then I said, well, how about the school? Because the school, that's a different operation. And I said, who did you talk to at the school? She said, well, they talked to Ben, 
Okay, they came here during school vacation week to go through the building. Um, they talked to Ben about the website, and, and what she said was that the, the, the impression she had was that, you know, the folks at Frontier who, who ran all that understood the situation and were addressing it. Okay, and beyond that, I have no idea. It's just that there's, you know, in that report, there's a bunch of stuff about, you know, stuff in buildings, but there's also about procedures and communication and, you know, procedures, you know, are you prepared to, you know, make accommodations? Do you know what accommodations have to be made? Not only for people coming who would be visiting the school or, you know, students at the school, but also for employees, okay, in situations and so on. So, um, you know, there's a lot to be done here. There's probably stuff that, you know, will affect our procedures in some way or the way we communicate about stuff, the way we communicate to parents and so on. Uh, but there was also the message was, you know, the you know, good for the town for, um, you know, we're moving down the road and there will be funding available to do a bunch of this stuff. Okay, but I think this is something where the administration really, you know, the more you could help put together a, a you know, a plan or a wish list or a priority list or whatever we want to call it and have that available, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the better because it can always be, you know, revised and updated and so on, but, you know, with a plan and then be willing, you know, at some point before too long to come to a meeting and argue for it. Okay, I think that's going to, you know, that's in our own self-interest and it's, you know, because we're a major building in the town, it's in the town's self-interest that we be as smart and as prepared as possible. Okay? Yep. So, um, I just, you know, I talked a little bit about it because I think it's important and I think we need to be, you know, proactive in, in, uh, in you know, figuring out as much as we can do to make this school as, you know, to deal with all the issues here so that we'll, I think we need to be doing that. And it's not, you know, and again, hopefully there's funding so that once we identify what we want to do, that we'll be able to have some funds to make some good <coughs> progress. I agree. I think it's a really good concrete realistic and just a really good starting point for any capital projects in the future. It should be a baseline of what we're working with. Very thorough, very detailed. Some of them do seem like some very simple fixes. Some of them yeah. are going to be. She, she said some are incredibly simple. Yeah. Some is just can be done part of your normal maintenance, okay? Just to get it so that you know stuff is the way it should be. Um, others are going to be much more complicated. Sure, I noticed one of the items on there was not having furniture within 18 inches of inside the classrooms, the doorway threshold. That's easy, easy fix. Right, right, right. And then there are other fixes that cost a significant amount of money. So. Right. Yeah, it's it's good, it's good to include that as part of as part of our overall building improvement plan. Right, and if we do chip away at it, it's something that needs to be reported to the town as well. But right, that's the whole thing. We're 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 all in this together. Okay, yeah. and and they are, you know, I mean, they're interested is in how the overall town is doing, and we're a big part of that. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're all on the same side. Absolutely. So we just got to. Yeah. And one other thing I would just pass on that she said, she used an example of some trivial thing that you could fix easily with some, you know, rug that needed to be, rug or rugs that needed to be nailed down or tacked down or glued down or something. And immediately the response from one or two selectmen was, what are you doing with rugs in the school? Because aren't they bad for air quality issues? And then it was like, well, maybe these much, I mean, you know, we got off that pretty quickly, but I just thought I'd pass it on. You know, it was you know, but they said rugs, upholstered furniture, upholstered furniture also is generally bad for air quality, um, and sponges that you let slip down behind the sink. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just pass it on. <laughs> Do you have any aspirations about what you expect to <laughs> uh, Whenever that first meeting is, 
sure it brings something back. Principal's report? Yes, you could take a copy and pass it along. On uh, Friday, May 24th, students and staff of SES were active participants during our annual community service day. Um, some of the projects included campus cleanup of trash and brush, beautification of our butterfly garden, and volunteer work at the town library. Um, additionally, our fifth grade class created a video that's going, that was rolled out at our final all school sing, um, but that focused on our school values of perseverance, empathy, respect, and responsibility. Um, earlier on in the year, uh, Sunderland staff identified what values we wanted to instill the most in our, um, uh, for our students here at Sunderland. We came up with those, and so our plan for next year is to really roll those out and kind of bring those values to life and what they look like um, during our everyday school lives here at, here at Sunderland. Uh, walk and Roll Recognition. The Massachusetts Safe Routes to School organization recognized Sunderland Elementary School as an exemplary program. Um, we've been holding Walk and Roll to School Days for the past seven years. This, this spring event, uh, which was held a couple weeks back, uh, saw over 300 students, staff, and participants, uh, or parents, participate. Um, I'm always coming flying in uh, the parking lot in my uh, my bike from Deerfield, and I, I saw a father uh, biking down our, our driveway, and he had his sport jacket on and dress pants, and I, I beat him to the door, and then I turn around, and it's Mr. Modesto. And so Mr. Modesto was uh, an active participant <laughs> in his first walk and roll. Yep. Um, but that was great. And then uh, we also received a citation from State Senator Joe Comerford and State Representative Natalie Blaze um, in recognition of this accomplishment. Our ELL teacher, Matthew Howell, uh, is the driving force behind making the Walk and Roll School event a huge success each and every year. Uh, other events that have taken place, uh, we had our spring concert, and that featured students in grades three through six performing on the strings instruments, and wind instruments, and then also our four through six chorus. On Saturday, June, what day was that? Was it the first or second? Um, Saturday, June 1st, the annual pound of pavement uh, road race was held at Sunderland Elementary School. That's put on by All States Materials Group. The race this year um, acted as our big fundraising kickoff for the Ella Early Childhood Playground. Um, all states is planning on donating some money, I'm not sure yet. Uh, it just so happens that one of our school committee members, Keith McFarland, was the winner for his age group. <laughs> and he won a, a cash prize that uh, qualified him for a massage afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one <Yeah>. since. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't catch Mr. B. <laughs> We had a sixth grade graduation. Uh, we had a staff breakfast where we honored uh, Louise Law, our director of curriculum and instruction for the district, Roberta Jaffe, our occupational therapist, and Karen Green, the uh, coordinated family outreach um, uh, individual for our district as well. We had an all school sing, field day, and spring car. And that's the report. I just would like to say I went to the sixth grade graduation because we got a nice invitation and I thought, why not? You know, you get to go to the school and you have absolutely no responsibility. It's not so bad. <laughs> um, and I just say a couple of things. First, I thought it was great. Uh, the, the whole thing, I just sat there and enjoyed it and I thought you did a great job. And I thought the, uh, you know, we talk about diversity, but boy, it sure is on you right there in, in uh, the, all the different kids and uh, adults in that room and so on and it was uh, quite really quite something and um, it was a, uh, it was a very impressive just uh, you know a little view of part of the school in action over the course of a year but I was very impressed um, I will say again our committee member Mr. McFarland here uh, his daughter got an award for being, uh, I don't know what the 
proper term is, but certainly a very distinguished member of that graduating sixth grade class. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, the only thing I'm going to say, and I know there's probably no solution at all, but boy, the acoustics aren't good. <laughs> Something and, we're working on. And I don't know what could be done. And I don't know if what the possibilities are, but boy, it was it was tough. Yep. Um, I, I've heard it from you know. I mean, we have town meetings in there, and it's really tough. And you know, there that's the first time I've been there for something other, you know, some sort of meeting other than a town meeting, and it's like, oh man, this is just really hard, and so on. So I don't know if there are any possibilities, and I don't know how we move a little bit in the direction of making it better, or if we're just stuck with it, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's listed on that report, <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is something we're looking at. <clears throat> I think it was, a, it was all, I, I was there too. It was yeah. excellent, it was great. I love the tradition of the uh, senior uh, Sunderland resident from Frontier coming back and giving a speech to the kids. It's one right. of my favorite parts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, this year's guest speaker was Elizabeth Fuqua who's graduating from Sunderland this year. She helped, or some from Frontier this year, she, in the fall, she helped lead the volleyball team to their 14th consecutive Western Mass title. And Elizabeth will be going to the University of Hartford in the fall to study elementary and special education. So, yeah, she did a phenomenal job. It was, a, it was just a great event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so for this report, all right. Um, we'll talk about negotiations in executive session. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to recognize Judy's last day working, well, last public meeting working with us. Um, I think she um, certainly helped carry the torch to a difficult time, a difficult year, and there's a lot of um, a lot of stress in it. Yes, it was. Um, I just wanted to thank you at your last meeting here um, for doing all that and helping us out. Coming back from um, principalship here uh, many years ago. 30 years ago. What years were you principal? I was here from uh, 86 to early 88. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. so, thank you for, yeah. for your help. Um, the direct facility search is ongoing and we're down to some finalists now and hopefully I'll have an answer by the beginning of next week. I think we should be somewhere along there. My evaluation is out there. If you haven't done it already, um, please submit that. The um, <clears throat> there won't be a summer meeting. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the uh, right now. Is not necessary for a summer meeting. We're hoping that the collective bargaining would be at a point where we need a summer meeting. Um, but really, even if we had wrapped it up, um, it probably would take till September before the union would be able to get in place anyway. So. Um, that's not going to happen. Right now, the summer retreat, I, I call it a retreat, but I guess it's just summer administrative meeting, so retreat sounds like something fun, um, is this week. We're doing the 20, 20th and 21st. We have, um, on Thursday, we have a, uh, it's when we're going to, the administrators are going to meet to review um, a lot of information about in goal setting for next year. Um, collectively, we're going to look at that family survey that went out. We're going to look at um, our current goals, um, our current improvement plans, what progress we've made, and some areas that we haven't been touching upon, um, and kind of working together and kind of come up with some direction for next year, including professional development plan. Um, and then the next day we have a work day, I call it a work day because they don't work any other day. Um, right then? Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw that joke, it didn't work. Um, but we call it a work day because I really, um, a lot of things that our principals and our districts are doing singly, and they really need to be uniform across the board from forms and where the forms are posted and why aren't they all linked on the same website. So when you go to get a field trip form, it really should look the same in every single building. I mean, you can have your local touches on things, but you know, legal stuff and that kind of thing should be the same. And while there are many similarities, they aren't across the board the same. And I want to kind of streamline some of those things. Our handbooks, um, language in our handbooks, making sure that every single one of them, parent handbooks and student handbooks um, across the board, are, are streamlined and that kind of stuff. So um, we have a long list of stuff that there's no way we'll do it all in one day, but we're gonna start cracking at it on Friday and see where we get. So I think I think principals are, I don't want to use the word excited, but are looking forward to that because it is, each one of them alone have five days, or five of them single-handedly working on each document, instead they're gonna be coming together 
sharing what they already have, you know, and um, that kind of stuff. So, which is kind of a need that I saw, um, and I think everybody agreed. Yeah. And they're already, we're asking for a second day, even we got to the first one, so we'll see if they want a second day after Friday, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. The other thing is, um, the 27th and 20th, following Thursday and Friday, we were bringing in, I say we're, unfortunately, we got notified last week that um, our presenter from the Curriculum Management Solution, um, which is a, a firm, it's a national firm um, that looks at, um, does a lot of audits, especially larger school districts, looking at um, their curriculum and how it relates to instruction in the classroom and how um, it's being translated and you know, for consistency across all schools and that all principals are learning what to look for, how to evaluate, evaluating curriculum, not just instruction. Many of us could sit in the classroom and say, wow, that was a good teacher based on, but is there a translation from curriculum to instruction and that fluid kind of thing going on? Um, unfortunately, that training has been canceled, but I am talking about it because right now we are, um, I've sent a couple, our early childhood coordinator and another principal to their training, they have several levels, level one, level two, and level three. Um, and I've already gotten positive emails from them that it's been tremendous there, and there may be, uh, we're talking to Ben about either um, going to a local one or trying to figure out training for him or a national one coming up, but I want everybody to get on the same page so that when we, when we look at moving the bar and how do you improve instruction in the classroom, if you have above average teacher, which many of our teachers are, how do you then move the next step, and it's going to be about aligning curriculum and um, you know what's being taught, and in, in, in the end within that instruction um, model, <coughs> having some direction. So that's what we're looking at. And this is a group that Sarah Mitchell has been working with, um, who is the director of secondary education um, for many years. She actually parts as part of one of their, some of their audit teams that go out. She's done audits of like New Haven Public Schools, San Antonio Public Schools, New Orleans. Um, some of these really big outfits where these guys, this group comes in with a large group to look at full what's going on and, and look at deficit where things aren't happening and how to improve. And so um, we kind of all agreed that looking at improving about not only what we see in the classroom but what can we do about it um, is something area that our professional development needs to go for our principals, right? Yep. Good. Yeah, don't say no. Yep. Um, good. So that's what I got there. Great. I believe that takes us to the end of the uh, <coughs> agenda. So, make a motion uh, pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A2. Uh, we go to the executive section uh, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non union personnel or conduct collective bargaining sessions or not the there's got so contract it. negotiations with, uh, yeah, not even personnel. I may I recommend that you do both executive right. sessions because one conversation may blow to the other, so sure. the other one is. And executive session for Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21, A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, uh, Union 38 teachers and instructional assistance. Correct. And you're going to have to roll call. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll second. All right. Uh, roll call. Keith? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Maisie? Yes. And Greg? Yes. <coughs> All right, so. And I, usually well, I think yeah. people say if we got any well, more business when we come out. There may be a vote coming out of that, depending on what the committee decides to do. So okay. you, will, you may go back into, into regular session for a vote. So it's on Sherry. Yep. It's, it's your, I mean, your decision, but it's on. I was just, I was just for. It's, unfortunately, that's why we're going to yeah. <laughs> We've done this thing, he's had a, we've had this problem before in another meeting, so okay. he knows the drill. Okay, we're out of executive session. All right, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion, um, which I wrote down, of course, now. I'm the, would be to um, accept the non-union salary schedule as presented. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. right. Let's see. And uh, adjourn.
adjournment. Motion to adjourn. So we have no meeting scheduled until September. Correct. Okay. And is there ever a case where a meeting would have to be called or anything? In case of an emergency. Happened last year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if there was a facilities emergency or some reason that they okay. needed to, that would be the only reason. I mean, we had several last year due to administrative changeovers, but right. that's what I remember. Right. So right. that's what kept us busy last summer. But if everything goes as it should, we should not see each other until September. <laughs> okay. And I'll, Mr. Chair, I'll move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.